No, it's it's optional now, so it's very here. They've made it optional mm -hmm. or recommended, recommended optional, something like that. Use your words. Thank <laughs> you. 
Were you one? different here. Good morning. Let's stand and let's sing this amazing song. You'll all recognize this song. And I just want to say thank you to this amazing group. Yeah, Matt Devlin, Steve Huffman, and Miss Trina Getz. Thank you for that. So join us, won't you, in singing Turn, Turn, Turn. Thank you. A 
time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together. To everything done. Thank you gotta you. have the outro. I, I love that. I, I feel like I'm a little loud in the room, Sam. And good morning. I am Reverend Penny Honey. Hi, how are you? <laughs> can you take a breath for me? There we go. Thanks. I can use that. Thank you. So you have landed my friends at Unity of Flagstaff, as I say on Sunday mornings. That's a real honor, actually because time, right? There's a time for everything. Some Sunday mornings, there are just different things to do. That's all right. My only request is this, that at some point in that day, whatever day of the week that is, just like people all over the world are doing, we are recognizing the divinity in ourselves. And when we do that, it makes it so much easier to see the divinity in each other. So welcome to a community that has a wide open heart, wide open door policy. All are welcome. And I wanna say good morning to our, our Zoomers out there. Hello, Zoomers. Everybody wave at the camera. There we go. We'll get you a little, get you a little yoga exercise there as you turn around and wave, right? <laughs> All right. And if there is anyone in the room for the first time, which I'm not seeing that, but yes, oh, of course. Thank you. And welcome, Elaine. This is Keith's sister. She didn't know I was going to put her on the spot like that, did she? <laughs> and and we, I won't ask you to sing as long as you don't ask me to sing. <laughs> we'll be fine. And Keith, we're glad to have you back Yay, with us. Keith. Yeah, really. What a joy. So I'm going to keep turning around a little bit because we don't have our little screen on the back. So if anybody knows where we can find a... TV screen that we can use in this room. Look at that. I've got a volunteer. Careful. <laughs> I'll be at your house this afternoon to pick it up. Because so <laughs> I am the delivery and pickup man. All right. So we have sufficiently welcomed you, I do hope. And now, my friends, let's take a deep breath. Mm. And see, ask and you shall receive. That's the way this works. So we open ourselves to that. We open ourselves to that in this room, in this moment, in this time. And we say, thank you, spirit. There is but one power, one presence. That is the good. Call it by whatever name you feel comfortable calling it. And we rest in that knowing and we rest in this connection. And we are grateful for the opportunity to come together to be this expression of spirit. We open this space and this time 
to receive the greatest good that serves everyone in this room, everyone out there in YouTube and Zoomer land and the planet. Receiving the good and knowing our divinity. For that, we are grateful. And we say thank you, God. And so it is. Ah, so thank you, Sue, magic light person. So it is now my pleasure, of course, to introduce to you not only our musician, Trina Getz, but today she's wearing another hat. She's our platform assistant. Round of applause for multi-talented Trina. <laughs> Trina does a lot of stuff. She's not only a PA, but she keeps that group together for us. She obviously does music. She also put a recipe book. Go, go to the website and check that recipe book out. It's, it's for a donation. It's a fundraiser. Got great, lots of, how many recipes, Trina? Like over 50. Over 50 recipes. I, well, over 80. I think. And There's if you a need a taste tester, I'm just saying, right? And she also takes care of the food for you program, as I like to call it. When someone is having a rough patch and they might need what I call casserole Christianity, <laughs> Trina, <laughs> Trina is the one that drives that with this really cool app that she introduced us to. So we thank that. So this is my, my motto for the day. Be like Trina. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> well, good morning. Hi, I have to follow that up now. I have to live up to that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm grateful to be here. It's been a while since I've been on the platform, I think. Anyway, I am thrilled to be here today, and it's wonderful to see all of you here today. So let's jump right into gratitudes and prayer requests. Gratitudes are a great way to um, grow yourself spiritually. They're just a great way to change your frame of mind, and I highly recommend practicing gratitude on a regular basis. Be like Trina. Be like me. <laughs> I highly recommend it. So um, does anyone have a gratitude or prayer request that they would like to share with the group? And prayer is awesome too. So either one is awesome. Yes. We're going to bring a microphone on so that Zoomers can hear you too. Every Sunday after service, I go to the cemetery because my beloved who passed away six years ago is out there. And I was shocked and thrilled that my daughter had made, uh, had bought and, and installed a new stunningly beautiful metallic flower mm. there. I love it, I love it. I love her mm. <laughs> and her. <laughs> that was so less conspicuous. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nobody saw anything. <laughs> I would just simply like to give thanks for uh, the help, the ride that got me here today. It's always good to have a little help. Amen, Brian. Amen. I'd like to make one on Tuesday is Vietnam Veterans Day. And I'd like for you all to remember the veterans who sacrificed and some you know, returned with major injuries and so forth. But uh, please remember Vietnam Veterans Day on Tuesday. Thank you. You betcha. I have a gratitude and a little prayer request. Um, you, obviously, you don't need to bring me a microphone, right? I have a gratitude, um, and this may sound, maybe I'll start out with a prayer request. That's, maybe that'll feel more balanced. A beautiful member of our congregation, Nancy Green, made her passing last week. Yeah, you feel that? And now I'm gonna follow that up with a gratitude for the light that she was and is on this planet for the joy, for the power, for the strength, and for the wisdom that she brought to many lives in this room. And I am in gratitude that she is free 
And we are celebrating that with Keith, with your family. And we want you to know we love you and we support you. And Nancy is free. So thank you for that. Amen. Um, thanks a lot, Penny. <laughs> Anyone else have a prayer request or gratitude? I was actually wondering um, if we could give Keith a blessing. We Keith, love are you. Are you willing, sweetie? We're we'll guide you, you if you aren't familiar you stay with right it, where you're at. Your hands up. We're going to bless you. All right. As if you weren't already. Whatever. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Trina, would you please leave? Sure. We love you. We, we bless, bless you. you. We, we appreciate, appreciate you. you. And we behold the Christ in you. So it is. I'm just going to be a little weepy at the moment, and I'm going to move, move through it. Now I know how Penny feels when she's in that position. <laughs> so we are grateful for all of the good news we have just heard, knowing that each item is a celebration of our divine nature, and we claim love, wisdom, healing, and wholeness for all prayer requests we have heard and those that have been unheard today. We remember that no circumstance can change who we are or separate us from our divinity. So it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I would like to thank our prayer team members, beautiful prayer team members. Raise your hands if you're around. There's one, there's two, maybe just two in the room today. Um, we have a prayer box that is on the other side of the piano, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's hiding back there. If you have a prayer request, and I invite you to please do this, um, you can put it in that box and our prayer team will pray over it. Um, and then they will send it to Unity Village to their prayer team to pray over it also. So um, prayer is very powerful and we highly recommend you use it. And now it's time for our Unity Principle. Everybody, human, human beings are divine, divine at their core and therefore inherently good. And this is a great time for me to bring up my inspirational blurb of the morning. So this was sent to me by um, good friends of our community, Steve Babcock and Jan Carada. Haven't been here in a while, but they're um, good friends of ours, neighbors. And it's called the Bodhisattva Prayer for Humanity. And initially I thought it's not necessarily about oneness, but doesn't oneness really always start with our own spiritual awakening mm -hmm. and our own compassion? So, and the Dalai Lama, according to what she wrote on here, the Dalai Lama um, highly, highly recommends his texts and uses this prayer every morning in his own devotions. So if you use this prayer, you're in good company. He has a pretty good track record. So um, I would invite you to just close your eyes and, and take it in and pray for all of humanity with it. Mm -hmm. So may I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles, and for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. And just breathe that in and send that out to the world. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's all.
<laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Sue, for taking care of the lights. We're going to move into meditate. It's my turn, right? <laughs> yes, it's your turn. We're going to move into meditation. Uh, just prepare yourselves. Wow. May I be. Yeah. May I be. May I be. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hear a little music with Daniel Namod. So just rest in. When I pray, when I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. Right here, right now. Feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. Right here. So we're going to start meditation now, and we're going to be blessed by my new friend, the Buddhist monk, Brian Lottman, who will actually be 
with us on Easter. Brian and I are going to do a service on Easter. We're calling it the minister and the monk walked into Easter. So enjoy this lotus flower meditation with Brian Lawton. Welcome to the Lotus Meditation. With palms together at the chest, let's chant three ohms together. Take 11 deep breaths through the nose, holding for a few seconds at the top of the breath. Now, imagine a crystal clear stream running through the chest. So clear, you can see the pebbles at the bottom of the stream. Floating on the stream is a pink lotus flower in the center of the heart. Gazing ahead, there are trees towering at the edge of a forest. The first light of dawn streams over the trees and the rays of light float down to strike the lotus flower 
in the center of your heart. The flower opens and blooms to receive the light. As the rays pour into the flower, it begins to glow radiantly pink until the whole chest glows. This powerful glow spreads to the rest of your body from head to toe. Then the pink light expands into your energy field. Brighter and more brilliant the light glows around the body. Feel the energy. Let the image go and absorb into the energy. Let yourself completely disappear into the meditation. Then slowly come back to the sensation of your body. And open your eyes. Welcome to the Lotus Meditation. Matt, do you want to introduce, do you want to introduce this while she's still oh, Yeah, so um, this is a new song. And uh, <clears throat> Matt and I wrote this pretty recently. So it's called We Are One. Yeah, feel free to join in on the chorus as you hear it. We are, we are one, one with spirit. We are one with the power. We are one with each other every day and every hour. We are one, we are one with everything under the sun. We are one with everything under the sun. We are one with our family. We are one with our friends. One with our 
neighbors with the love that never ends. We are one, we are one. With everything under the sun, we are one. With everything under the sun. We are one with the James, with the elk and the deer, the sun and the stars, with the sky so clear. We are one, we are one, with everything under the sun. We are one, with everything under the sun. We are one, with everything under the sun. As it falls from the sky, we are one with the water. We drink when we are dry. We are one, we are one with everything under the sun. We are one with everything under the sun. We are one with everything under the sun. We are one. We are one with everything under the sun. We are one with everything under the sun. We are one with everything under the sun. With everything under the sun. We are one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. I'm guessing we're going to hear that one a little more, huh? So I'm going to, I don't want to run over you, you know, how I am. I might get a little carried away over here. <laughs> we are one. But I don't agree with you. We are one. But I don't like what do you think about that? We are one. <laughs> we are one. <laughs> we are one. But I am unique, unrepeatable expression of God. I don't know if I want to be like all globbed in with all that one stuff. What if I get lost? What if I become diminished? What if I feel dismissed? We are one. We are one. We are one. And that's not just a new thought fantasy or one of those feel good platitudes, which I've been known to only use them every day. They're posted all over my house, right? One God, one mind, one connection. We are one. God is already in every part of your being. So it is just a matter of being conscious of the oneness. It's not about creating it. God is already in every part of your being. So it is a matter of being conscious of oneness, Myrtle Fillmore tells us in Healing Letters. This is where we once again get to look through, beyond, past the physical appearances of what we see. But I don't agree with you. Look through it, Penny. Look through it, Penny. And the first image you will run into is your divine nature when you can look through it. When you keep moving toward that consciousness and that awareness of oneness. Look through it, Penny. I like to say, 
What do I like to say? <laughs> I forget, actually, it's a quote of my own and I can't remember it, so we must not need it. That's what I know about. Seriously, it's not dropping in, so we must not need it. So the absolute being, the divine mind, the unlimited principle, the almighty one, and as much as we'd like to think that is outside of us, not so much. Now, why do we resist oneness? We're seeing a lot of action on the planet right now, and it doesn't look like oneness, does it? In fact, it's noisy and it's damaging. And it's scary. That doesn't look like oneness. What do you mean, Penny, when you say all pervading? All, all, all. You are one with all. That's not even possible, is it? Because again, am I not afraid that I'll get lost or be diminished in that? Am I not afraid that my ego won't be seen and heard? Am I afraid that my opinion won't count? If I just get globbed into that oneness, I think that's one of the main reasons we're afraid. Our little ego says, nah, ah, 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 ah. you're just fine the way you are. And I am. And so are you. You're, you're big enough. You need your voice heard. You are the one that needs to be heard. Really? And maybe that's true. But it doesn't mean that I am no longer connected to you or you or you. See, I am one of many ones. And it takes every one of those ones to complete that oneness. I am not limited by the one, the maximum, the capacity that this one can be because I am tagging on to you guys. I get to expand into that. I get to be the greater expression because of my oneness with you. I don't have to be afraid of being connected and know that I'm one with you. I don't have to be afraid of that. In fact, I've got a safety system set up. I've got you. I've got humankind standing with me in my humanness and looking to express my divinity, we are one. Right there, we are one. It is in the thinking that separate is better, that it is self-preserving. And it's as I'm looking at the world, I'm observing a lot of fear and sadness and ego expressing itself. And that's not just in Russia, folks. That's right here. It's right here. And when I remember that it is the divine nature in me that wants to express through so it can join with the divine nature of each one of you and in the world, I become exponential. I become and am aware of my unlimitedness, of my infinite divine nature. And when I close myself down and I have to be right, and I have to be first, and I have to be the best, and I got to get it done faster than anyone else, when I lock myself into that, I separate my knowing of oneness, but you know what? I can't get away from it. I'm still one. We're still one. I'm just fooling myself. I'm really fooling myself that I can separate no matter how much I may disagree. I cannot, by the divine nature of who I am, separate from you. And how much easier those conversations can get when we remember that absolute truth. How much easier our life can be when we remember that truth of who we are. 
And you know what I notice? Because I go back and I watch these Sunday messages. And you know, you always start out, I start out with the criticizing. Well, don't wear that again. <laughs> Would you stand still, Penny? I'm going to nail your feet to the floor. You do a lot of moving around, you know, blah, 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 blah. But what I notice is just about every Sunday, no, every Sunday, not just about every Sunday, every Sunday, we come back around to expressing our divinity. This is where the power of oneness is our support system because it's safe for me to express my divinity divinity because I am one with you. And if I feel like I'm coming up a little short, like I said before, I've got a backup plan because your oneness will carry me and it will remind me. In the book, Heart-Centered Metaphysics, written by Paul Hesselbeck and a whole slew of other people, he proposes this, the statement that we are one with God with spirit, divine intelligence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that we are one with God. In reality, it should say we are one in God. And I like to add, we are one as God. How do you feel about who you are now? Can you feel that? One as God. And this quote stuck with me. We are not seeking so much to learn about divine mind or beingness or God as we are wanting to deepen our experience and realization of it. We are not seeking so much to learn about divine mind as we are wanting to deepen the experience of it. Now, if we try to wrap our heads around we are one, and we try to be logical with that, we give ourselves the opportunity to see many ways in which we are not acting as one. We really do. I encourage you not to do it. Just knock that off. Just don't do that, <laughs> okay? Because if you're trying to wrap your head around the logic of we are all one, I'm thinking, where's the room big enough to hold us, right? I'm thinking, well, gosh, how much turkey soup will that take? <laughs> you know, our little, our little brains start to kick into gear when we try to reason this and, and put logic and, and, and because, well, because, because I should know. I should know that. I should be able to understand that logically. And no matter how much I study this, and have studied this, I can't get to the logical reason. But I can tell you this, it doesn't mean that we aren't one. It doesn't mean that we aren't one. All it means is I haven't got my head wrapped around it. But you know what? It's my heart that knows. And when I remember that about you and that about me, I truly get to step into with more ease, with more confidence, with more grace, my divine nature. A person experiences life as something separated from the rest is a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. Our task must be to free ourselves from this self-imposed prison and through compassion to find the reality of oneness. Einstein, a person experiences life as something separated from the rest is a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. Our task must be to free ourselves from the self-imposed prison and through compassion to find the reality of oneness. Einstein. Einstein said that this requires us to expand into our greater selves in order to accept and receive and experience our infinite nature, our infinite nature. There is a movement at Unity Worldwide right now, and they are expanding the language that we use in Unity. Okay, they're expanding it because we are infinite. And, you know, there's a quote by Charles Fillmore, one of our founders, that says, 
I write this credo, this is where I'm at, and I reserve the right to change my mind. Because you're infinite, because you're not limited by only what you've heard or what you have been exposed to has a big impression, but you're not limited to that. There's a movement in worldwide unity to adjust the way we language things so that we can start to embrace a bigger world. Do you know people don't so much like just thinking that God is male? I'm in that camp. Yes, right? People aren't so happy with that. Not near as happy as they were in the 18th century. I don't know why we would think about expanding our language. They're looking to move toward a language of oneness. And I say, yay, right? It's about time. We're the ones that are leading that charge. We are the one. And we are one. For example, the use of the male language that was common. They say now they, they use this term, you know, politically correct. I don't know about politically correct, but I can tell you that it feels much softer to my soul to think that God is not limited to this picture that I was given when I was seven. And I think I've done a little growing since I was seven. Thank heavens I did a little growing since I was seven, right? And why would I not expand my language and my understanding of the world? Why would I not open to that? It's just like that bylaw that you're going to see come in the mail from members here at Unity of Flagstaff. That bylaw expands us. It changes our opportunity to express in a greater way how we want our spiritual leaders to show up. Now, that's not so bad that we expand. Well, unless you're counting carbs, I may want to take that back. But, but the point is this, why would we think when we look into the universe and we listen to our astronomers and astrologers and all these folks and they're telling us the, the physical universe is actually expanding. It's actually taking up more room than it used to take, right? If the physical universe is expanding, I think we should get on the bus. I think we should open ourselves into that connecting with that oneness. Agree or disagree, we see through the differences and we move to the knowing of our divine presence and we are one. Doesn't that feel good? Like, oh, so if I take off too fast and I'm getting ready to step out into traffic, one is going to reach out and bring me back to who I am. That's what we do when we remember that we're one. We support each other. We love each other. And we disagree. And we see through it. And we move through it. And we reclaim. We reclaim our oneness. <laughs> right? I like this party of oneness. I thought that was cute, party of one, get it? Party of one, <laughs> all right, she got it, yes. I got one in the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to recognize this oneness, what we must be with, <laughs> that stuff just comes in and I just hope somebody gets it, right? <laughs> it, we must expand beyond this circle that we're holding. You know, it's interesting, the word one, isn't it? How it's that, it starts with that big circle. Think of it as a net. It's made out of netting. And it moves out and it moves in and it holds us in a place of safety and preciousness and awareness. And everybody, all are in the one of that. It's not a little tiny square box because we're afraid we might get lost. I like the way that Eric Butterworth says it. He says this, oneness is the truth. God is in us, not like a raisin in a cinnamon roll, but like the ocean in a wave. I know, I thought that was hilarious. Not like a raisin in a cinnamon roll, but like the ocean 
in the way. Oneness is the truth. Charles Fillmore says this, one mind, there is but one mind. Every individual and the various phases of the expression of that character that make up that state of consciousness in one mind. And I've said that I am remembering this one. I've said this for years. Every breath required for the synchronicity of the universe. Every breath. When you embrace one, you always see the innate. You see the divine. And you always are supported. Seeing oneness is absolute, regardless, regardless of the appearances, gives us power to not get hung up on being one with that, but to see through the physical realm and to be one. You already are. It's there. See through the chaos and the mess, and it's there. You're already it. Oneness. You're already it. What is that it? Well, so our little small circle is crying to be this. It just wants to do that. It wants to expand into that oneness is life. It's the, it's the source. It's the sustainer of all. And our little souls are saying, take me out there. I want to go be that big today. I want to know and remember that I am in that oneness. Life is the principle that expresses as wholeness and health as us, through us, as one. <laughs> I really like that idea. We are better together. And why do we know this? Because let me ask you something, and you're going to hear this in the next song from these amazing musicians, on whose door, on whose door does the moon not shine? On whose door does the sun not warm their plants and grow them? On whose door is the, is the infinite intelligence not presence? Where is it that God wouldn't show up, that our oneness wouldn't express? No matter how dark, whose door would it not show up at? There's not one. The oneness is, and we are that. And it is our opportunity to get on the bus and remember that expression that we are one. We are going to treat each other better. We're going to love ourselves more. We're going to do better work in the world when we remember that we are one. Consider your own place in the universal oneness of which we are all a part of, from which we all arise and to which we will all return, David Fontana says. And how do we get there from here? I'd like to quote Huan Yin, the goddess of compassion. She says, hear the cries of the world and move to compassion in your oneness. How do we remember that we're one? That's it, compassion. No matter how much we disagree, no matter how much we don't like something, Move back to compassion for that divine child of God that resides within you and that divine child of God that stands in front of you. Move back to compassion. And I will tell you, I strongly recommend not skipping that step. The oneness is already, it's recognizing it that we struggle with. E pluribus unum, one of many. One of many amazing ones. One of many. The final goal of all religions is to realize the essential oneness, says Mahat Gandhi. We're not a drop in the ocean. We're the entire ocean, says Rumi. Everything under the sun 
and not one door gets missed. Namaste. <laughs> Shines on yours, shines on his, hers and mine. On whose door the moonlight not shine? Oh, it's so rich, we have no idea. The is like for the rest of us. Circus clowns and a panda bear who paints on pilgrims and potentates and those who push the plow on princesses and reprobates and those who don't know how. On whose door does the moon light and not shine? Shines on yours, shines on his. Hers and mine, on whose door does the moon light not shine? On people who wander and journey from afar, on people who stay and prosper where they are, on people who give and help others for their sake on people who steal till there's nothing left to take on whose door does the moon and light not shine shines on yours shines on his hers and mine on whose door does the moon Does the moon light not shine? Shines on yours, shines on his, hers and mine. On whose door does the moon light not shine? How about that? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank that was you. written by John York who used to be in the birds. So, so it's birds day here at uh, <laughs> Unity of Flagstaff. And we're gonna turn this back over to Miss Trina now. Right on, well, I'm back. And it's time for our <laughs> announcement. I never really left. And it's time for our announcements. <laughs> so we are, uh, we will have our abundance sharing in just a moment. So uh, please be preparing for that while I give you a few quick announcements. So as always, you will find all of our events and more at our website, everybody together, www.unityofflagstaff.org. So 
today we are going to have after the service at noon what the heck does unity teach about that <laughs> so the soon to be famous reverend penny honey soup. and her soup. turkey soup <laughs> well she's already famous but her turkey soup is going to be famous and um we are going to have a little more to say about that shortly mm -hmm. yeah so um but that's at noon today so um come for some turkey soup. Annual meeting. Our annual meeting is April 10th. Oh my goodness. That's coming up soon. Remember how much fun we had last year on Zoom? This year we get to be in person for our annual meeting. <laughs> Yay! This is our first annual meeting in this center. Yes. Wow. That's an exciting statement. It is. <laughs> So um, we're going to be serving a light lunch. And for the Zoomers, you can still participate virtually. So we will be hybrid. Yes. Uh, fabulous. Fabulous. So for those of you on Zoom land who still want to participate, you can. So um, we are committed to 90 minutes. So no more. Right? No that's, more. That's our, that's our commitment, 90 <laughs> minutes. So uh, fun facts and folly. <laughs> I, I haven't experienced that self. in an annual meeting in the past, but I'm fun I, facts. And I, if follow. anyone can bring that to an annual meeting, it's Penny. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Penny can do it. So um, the Zoom link will be on our website. So it won't be the same one that gets us to the service. It'll say annual meeting. It'll be clearly designated. It'll also okay. be sent out in a regular email like I send out to okay. everybody before the meetings. All righty. So and then next Sunday, oh, the next Sunday after April 10th, sorry, we will be coming together for Easter. First Easter, Easter here also. First Easter here yeah. in the center. Last Yay. year we were in the field in Bushmaster. So yeah. this year we are here. That's yeah. exciting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, this year we have this even more exciting. We have a special treat. We heard from the monk, uh, Brian Ottoman. Lotman. Uh, pardon? Lotman. 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 Oh, it says Ottoman on here. It must well, have auto-corrected you. Who types things? Who, who types that it stuff? Clearly, <laughs> clearly uh, Microsoft Word didn't know what his name was. So he should, <laughs> it's Lotman. Just decided you wanted to call him an Ottoman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Far be it for me. <laughs> So, um, yeah, don't you just love autocorrect? <laughs> yeah. So the minister and the monk is going to be our Easter talk and they are going to do it together. Yes. So that will, and it's, is the name of the talk open to the light, open to the light. Beautiful. The minister Beautiful. and the monk walked into Easter. <laughs> <laughs> open to the light is the, will be the message. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to write a joke around that. There's gotta be a good <laughs> There's one. There's gotta be a good one. So, of course, um, all of this is on our website. Do you need me to say it again? Because I already made them say it I once. think we know it's www.unityoflagstaff.org. Okay. 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 Just in case. So, and you do want to say anything more about um, I did. today? Yes. So today at noon, um, actually, it's funny because I wrote soon to be soon to be famous turkey soup and she said soon to be famous me i like that oh that's well nice it was soon to be famous reverend penny turkey, <laughs> turkey soup, soup and i just stopped at the reverend i love it um so today at noon and um uh, folks that are becoming new members we have three folks so far that have signed up to become new members we're asking that they stay for that for this uh what the heck does unity teach about that but i encourage actually all of you that have an interest in that because you know do you know what unity teaches about the trinity pop quiz. Do you know what unity teaches about resurrection? About crucifixion? About Jesus? See, isn't it cool? And a lot of us have been in unity a long time. So we're going to just, we're going to have a fun, fun game of stump the minister. We're going to have some good turkey soup. Dave brought some amazing uh, butternut squash for the vegetarian fair. We've got some crackers. Blah, 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 blah. We're just going to have fun. And we're going to get you out of here in time to attend this afternoon's fundraiser for Ukraine that is at the Orpheum it is free of charge, starts at two o'clock, goes till seven, local artists, uh, shopkeepers, all kinds of things going on there to raise funds for Ukraine. So I encourage us to have our turkey soup, 
have a game of stump the minister and get on down to the Orpheum, right? Because uh, we are wanting to support that. And if you are interested in membership, but you're not quite sure about that, uh, let me know because we need to get you approved because you will be approved by the board as a member and then attending the annual meeting, of course, as a member at Unity of Flagstaff. Membership is never required here, just never is, unless you want to be a board member. But what it does say is that, you know what? I like being part of that one. I like that. And I like that support team. Not that you don't already have it, just like the oneness, it's already there, but it is an out loud commitment to that. So thank you for that. All right, I'm done. Are you done? Uh, um, it's time for abundance sharing. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> so I'm not quite done yet. Right. So greeters come forward with the baskets. Yes, please. Come forth and come be forward. And as we bless these baskets, we are going to, if you would join me, please, in the abundance, I'm going to step over here, gentlemen, the abundance thought of the week. And here we go. This week this is going, going to be, to be filled, filled with, with miracles, miracles breakthroughs, breakthroughs, good news, news abundance, news, and love. Go forth, my friends. And now there are words to the abundance chant that Matt Devlin wrote. They are going to now do that song. Join in as you are comfortable and please stand when you're ready to. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. If there's somebody in need, I will not give me down. What I give the world comes right back around. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me, what I give away comes back abundantly. When I look around, I see all that I need, good health, good wealth, and inner peace. What I give away comes back to me, what I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me, what I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. What I give away comes back to me. What I give away comes back abundantly. And together we are affirming we are grateful. Unity of Flagstaff, Flagstaff is powerful in its, in its expression, expression of abundance. Of abundance. This, this is our truth, truth, and so it is. We, we say thank, thank you, God. God. And together we affirm the light of oneness surrounds us. The love of oneness enfolds us. The power of oneness protects us. And the presence of oneness watches over us wherever we are. Oneness is, and all is well. And we're going to do a little more of We Are One. Thank you, gentlemen. Guess what that is? Capo, capo. <laughs> Just the chorus. It is a cinnamon roll. Just the chorus. You don't see a raisin? <laughs> In it, not on it. In it, not on it. <laughs> we are one. With everything under the sun, we are Come on, one. we know this. With everything under the sun, 
we are one with everything under the sun. We are one. Woo! Create a great week. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you for that. Yeah, and I think a circle is best. Yeah. Oops. Hey, it's Jason here in a fake fur hat. A couple of weeks ago, I asked people to point their cameras into the direction of love. And if you want to know what love is, well, check this out. Why? Why are we here to say our hellos and goodbyes and disappear?